what's going on in your brain right now. Hopefully, you're looking forward to lots of interesting talks over the next three days. But what's going on inside your brain right now that I'm interested in is splicing. By investigating expression of a single gene in human brain, we have found that splicing is much more diverse than was previously known. Why are we interested in splicing in the human brain? Understanding how mRNA transcripts are spliced helps us understand how genes are functioning and that how our whole brain is functioning. The more we understand about how our brain works, the better we can understand and treat psychiatric disorders. My lab is interested in voltage-gated calcium channels that have been linked to bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. When Nanapur invited me to come and speak here, I was very honored, very pleased. And then they asked what I wanted for my walk-on music, and I had absolutely no idea. Um, I was terrified that everyone was going to judge my music choices. Um, but after a lot of deliberation and some helpful suggestions, you heard Secrets by Mary Lambert. And in the first line of this song, in her own words, she has bipolar disorder. I wasn't allowed to use the start of the song because the next line includes a teeny tiny swear word. And, and this, well, I had a lot of options when choosing an artist who has a diagnosis of bipolar disorder or schizophrenia. And this is a perfect example of how having a mental health diagnosis is no barrier to a happy and successful life if symptoms are well treated, usually through a combination of medication, talking therapies, and other methods to maintain health and well-being. However, current treatments do not work for everyone, which is why we're investigating voltage-gated calcium channels as potential targets for new treatments. Calcium is one of the most important signaling molecules in the body. And as such, it is tightly controlled within cells. Uh, how it enters cells, how it exits cells, and how it's stored. Calcium signaling is essential for neurotransmission and for the regulation of gene expression in neurons. So it's perhaps unsurprising that aberrant calcium signaling has been linked to psychiatric disorders. I'm interested in the gene CACN1C that encodes a voltage-gated calcium channel. Genome-wide association studies have robustly linked loci within CACN1C to the risk of bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and other psychiatric diagnoses. The structure and function of the CACN1C protein is quite well studied. And there are existing drugs that target this protein. However, a lot of this work has been done in rodents and not in humans. And CACN1C is important in the cardiovascular system as well as in the brain. The existing calcium channel blocker drugs are used to treat conditions like high blood pressure. This has produced some interesting evidence supporting a role for calcium channels in psychiatric disorders such as this recent paper, which found that people with a severe mental illness who happened to be treated with calcium channel blockers had reduced psychiatric hospitalization and reduced self-harm. However, if we're designing a new treatment, we would like it to be brain-specific and without effects on the heart. So how can we target CACN1C in the brain only? The CACN1C gene is very large. It has over 50 known exons currently annotated on the genome browser. And which of these exons are included in the final transcript through the process of alternative splicing results in multiple different protein isoforms. There are currently over 30 isoforms annotated. These splicing differences are known to impact on protein function and, crucially, on drug binding. 
Our aim is to identify brain-enriched CAC1C isoforms that could be the targets for brain-specific treatments. So to do this, we first need to characterize all the isoforms of CAC1C present in the brain. To do this, uh, we've been using nanopore sequencing. Uh, standard RNA sequencing fragments the transcript before sequencing. But to really understand how a gene functions, we need to know how different parts of the gene work together. Um, in CAC1C, uh, this region is important for voltage sensitivity, and these regions bind intracellular signaling proteins. So we need to know how these different domains work together. We have used long-range, targeted uh, sequencing of full-length transcripts from healthy human brain samples to fully characterize the isoforms of CACN1C. This project requires a large team of many different specialists. Uh, my lab is captained by Liz Tunbridge. Uh, we received high-quality brain samples from Danny Weinberger at the Lever Institute. Those samples were processed and the eventual results validated by Ian Tanny and me in Oxford. Uh, Mike Clark led the sequencing. Uh, if you want to hear about his uh, single cell work, he's talking on Friday. And our reads were analyzed by a custom-built bioinformatics pipeline developed by Wilfred and Tamash at the Earlham Institute in Norwich. Alongside this, Paul Harrison is leading the OxCAMS experimental medicine study, which is investigating the effect of an existing calcium channel blocker on mood instability. So we analyzed 18 samples, uh, six brain regions, each from three individuals. The RNA was reverse transcribed, and we used PCR to do targeted amplification of CACN1C. The reads were analyzed by two complementary bioinformatics pipelines. One focused on um, uh, identifying novel exons, the other on identifying novel splice sites. The exon level analysis is able to identify novel exons at least nine nucleotides in length, and it maps reads to the known and novel exons. It is able to compare relative abundance but it struggles to detect novel exons or splice site variations shorter than nine nucleotides. The splice site level analysis identifies canonical splice junctions and maps reads to these junctions. It is able to detect small scale variation as small as a single amino acid codon, three nucleotides, but quantitation is less reliable and it is currently unable to detect non-canonical splice sites. So I will show you some of our exon level analysis results first. Splicing of CACN1C in human brain is much more diverse than was previously known. We have identified 38 novel exons and 83 high confidence novel isoforms. We only detected seven of the previously annotated isoforms. The annotated isoforms are at the top here. Uh, in our results, the most common read in uh, green here uh, was one already annotated, but the next nine were all novel, and eight of those are predicted to encode functional channels. We, ident we uh, looked at samples from different brain regions and from different individuals, so next we asked, how does splicing vary between individuals and between brain regions? Ideally, for designing new treatments, you want minimal variation between individuals. And that is what we found. Uh, in this principal components analysis plot, there is very little variation between different individuals, shown by different shapes, but there is variation between different brain regions, shown in different colors. So the four brain regions that are all part of the cortex, clustered together, separated from the striatum, and from the cerebellum, which are brain regions with different cell structures. So this suggests that perhaps CACN1C splicing is regulated according to cell type or function. Those were the exon level results. 
So now I will show you the splice site level results. Again, we found a huge diversity of splice isoforms. Uh, using this analysis, we identified 195 high confidence isoforms, of which only three were previously annotated. Quantitation using this method is less reliable, but similar to our epsilon level results, we saw more variation between brain regions than we did between individuals. There is overlap between the sets of isoforms identified by the two different pipelines, and in total, we identified just over 250 uh, different isoforms. So what impact might this splicing have on the protein function? Whilst we saw over 250 different isoforms, there are many common themes in the splicing events. Uh, we saw uh, lots of splicing in regions linked to voltage sensitivity and also to regions linked to secondary messenger signaling. We saw little, to, well, very little uh, splicing happening in these critical structural domains of CAXL1C, i.e. the transmembrane domains and the beta subunit binding domain. And this suggests that this splicing is not completely random, it's not just noise. Uh, there appears to be some regulation to produce potentially functional channels. The splice site level analysis was able to detect variation as small as a single amino acid codon, um, such as these, and some of these are quite abundant, uh, including this three, four, or five amino acid codon length deletion, which was found in almost half of all reads predicted to be protein coding. And we have validated the three and four amino acid codon length deletions in full length transcripts of CACN1C that we have cloned. So what about other sources of transcript variation? We used targeted PCR to amplify CACN1C using the start and end sites currently annotated in the genome browser. That means transcripts with alternative start sites will not be amplified. CACN1C has a known alternative start site in the heart. So it is plausible that there are alternative transcript start sites in the brain. I used uh, rapid amplification of cDNA ends, five prime race, to identify uh, CACN1C start sites in human brain. The annotated start site is here at the bottom in blue and the known alternative start site in the heart is upstream somewhere over here in the genome. Using 5' race, I identified two start sites for CACN1C in human brain. The first aligns with the known start site, but the other one is currently unannotated. Uh, we've cloned a full-length transcript from this start site and it is predicted to encode a functional channel with truncated end terminus. So the next step uh, is to perform the targeted long range sequencing on transcripts from this novel start site to see what isoforms are produced. So far, all the results I've shown you have been in the brain, but to identify brain enriched isoforms, we need to be able to compare the brain and the cardiovascular tissue. Unfortunately, we haven't got hold of human uh, matched heart and brain samples yet, but we do have some preliminary results in mice. Saeed here has performed the targeted long range sequencing on mouse, heart, aorta, and brain. And similar to our results in humans, he has found a huge diversity of splice isoforms many of which are novel and many of which are predicted to encode functional protein channels. In this plot, we can see clear separation between the brain, the heart, and the aorta. So tissue, uh, so splicing appears to be strongly tissue specific. Uh, I previously mentioned that CACN1C has a known alternative start site and using different uh, PCR primers to do targeted amplification. 
Saeed was able to detect this alternative start site in the heart only. However, many of the Cacnamon C isoforms we found in humans, we did not find in mice. And many of the isoforms we found in mice, we did not find in humans. So whilst the DNA sequence of Cacnamon C is quite well conserved between mice and humans, it appears that the splicing pattern is not well conserved. But whilst this experiment won't tell us exactly which isoforms are different between the human heart and brain, we do expect that the principle of tissue-specific splicing will be conserved. So in summary, we have shown that human CAC1C encodes a wide variety of novel putative calcium channels. We've also found that the CAC1C isoform profile differs between brain and cardiovascular tissue in mice. Our ongoing work will characterize the uh, different isoforms of CAC1C in human brain versus cardiovascular tissue. And we're also going to perform functional assays on some of the uh, calcium channel isoforms to see how splicing affects protein function. Hopefully, we will identify brain-enriched isoforms of CACN1C that could be the targets for brain-specific uh, psychiatric treatments. Thank you.